Hello, this is uh, Sia Rodriguez again with uh, another uh, video lecture about the CompTIA IT Fundamentals Plus certification exam. Uh, this is uh, module three, unit five. This is the last unit on this module. And uh, this is about using the file system. Uh, in this uh, uh, presentation, you should be able to uh, describe the properties of file systems and select an appropriate file system for uh, a, a given OS and usage. Use a file manager to create, open, move or copy, and delete files in folders or directories. Use search tools and view options to locate files uh, quickly. So when it comes to managing the uh, file system, uh, first of all, we have uh, the physical disk and drives that uh, are installed in a computer, whether those are internal physical disks or uh, external disk. Obviously, the uh, operating system is installed in an internal physical disk. And uh, so the disk has to have disk partitions, right? So when you install a disk for the first time, uh, you need to partition the disk. And what this does is that it divides the disk into logical separate storage areas. Um, each partition can have different file systems, uh, meaning that I can have a big drive and um, partition into different logical drives, different drive letters in Windows, for example. And I could have a partition with NTFS to install, for example, the operating system. But there is a, something else that I need that requires, in Windows, you can have either NTFS or uh, FAT or uh, FAT32 actually. So I can have one partition with NTFS and another partition with uh, FAT32. Uh, there must be at least one partition. In other words, when I have a hard drive, and most hard drive, um, so when you buy them out of the box are not partitioned, right? Unless it's uh, a small flash hard drive. But so when you buy a drive, you have to partition, even if you just put one, of course. A, a lot of, you know, especially home users' computer come with one hard physical hard drive, one partition, right? But you must have at least one. And uh, the, uh, the partition where the operating system is installed uh, has to be what is called the, the, the active partition or, or the system partition. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works later on in, uh, uh, in some demos. So when it comes to Windows drives, right? Uh, we said that we need logical partitions. Um, there are optical drives and all the removable drives that can be assigned separate drive letters. So you have the C drive, which is basically with the OS, and normally that's the C drive, and then you have the D drive that could be either another drive or a partition of the main drive or a DVD and, and that kind of stuff. So the boot drive, which you would, you know, usually that's what it is. And there are ways to change, you know, you, you can have in different drives and stuff like that, but normally speaking, you have this boot drive, usually it's drive C, contains the Windows system files, system files that uh, are needed for the system to uh, operate properly. Okay, so if you look at uh, the uh, picture here, so we got, Number one, so we got the, the, the C drive, and then in this computer, I have a, uh, you know, a, B, a D drive, which is a DVD, right, or Blu-ray or whatever that might be. Uh, and then I have also uh, some that, that looks like, this is an external drive, it looks like a Seagate expansion drive. Um, so that's another drive, that, that's the whole point. And this is, uh, it could be uh, internal to, and then this is drive E. And then I have a flash drive, which is probably an external drive, and this is drive, uh, uh, drive letter I. So again, different drive letter. These drive letters, by the way, can be changed. Yes, they can be changed. So 
normally the C drive is that's the one that you can now mess around because that's the operating system. But I can change the DVD drive to be something else and, and this too. And we'll see that in, in the demos, right? Uh, so this is the typical layout. So you, you have the drives, the DVD, the, the, the flash drives, and then in those drives, you have folders. You have folders, you have libraries, and then you got files. So again, drives, folders, files. That's basically the structure of uh, in Windows. So in Windows, you can access data via letter uh, label drives. Do these correspond exactly to physical disks? And no, not necessarily. So uh, as I just mentioned, um, you can have a one physical drive and then partition that into one or more logical drives with drive letters. So you can have a hard drive with three partitions and then it will have three drive letters, but it's only one physical drive. And again, uh, we will um, you, we will be able to demonstrate that when we're working uh, uh, with partition in the drives. So the file system again, it, we had just said that a partition must be formatted with a file system before the OS can use it. So before you can create files and folders, first the drive must be partitioned. Second it must be formatted. And while you are formatting the drive, then you have to choose a file system. Um, so in Windows 7, Windows 10, so basically uh, the FAT file system, the original FAT, like FAT16 it's called, it's, uh, it's a very old file system that is not used in modern OSs anymore. Uh, but you still can use what version FAT calls, you know, FAT32. Uh, there's a lot of limitations of these file systems in terms of the size of the hard drive and also they don't support any security they don't support any journal anything any of the new uh, and you know uh, features that are supported by ntfs and by the way ntfs stands for the new technology file system which is actually very old also but this is the kind of the de facto file system for for windows Important to remember that Windows must be installed on an NTFS partition. So you cannot install Windows on FAT, the, the, you know, especially the, the current versions of Windows. It used to be that you could, but not uh, Windows 10. You, you also have optical drives, uh, which is called DVDs and CD-ROM drives. Um, those are the universal disk uh, format, UDF. Um, and those are things, when you buy them, they're just ready for you to do whatever. You don't actually format the, you know, DVDs and that kind of stuff. So, but these are the standards for the optical drives. Uh, and then we have the Linux and Mac file systems. Usually, um, so Linux would use what's called the EXT3 and the EXT4. The, the EXT2, it's an old file system that was, it can also be used by some versions of Linux. And then Apple uses that hierarchical file system, uh, HFS plus, and also uh, Apple uh, file system APS. And remember that these are not compatible. So that's why a program, you know, that runs in one file system actually uh, does not run in, 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 the, in the other. And um, so if a file system it's, it's created, you know, uh, for NTFS, you know, the, some stuff actually do not work with the other file system and, and, and vice versa. So what type of file system must uh, the partition that Windows files are installed on use? And again, it's NTFS. So remember that in Windows, you have the choice to either FAT32 or NTFS. And, uh, but the partition where you install the operating system has to be NTFS. Now let's take a look at some of the features of the file system. Uh, first of all is compression. Yes, you can compress files. So, so let's say that you have a hard drive that it's almost full and you have a lot of files, you can compress those files to, to save the space. Now, 
because the, the size of the hard drives nowadays, this is very rarely used um, in Windows per se, but um, again, you could still, it's not commonly used, but it can be used. So if you have a hard drive that is almost full and you have a lot of data that can be, you know, you can compress that into a folder, you can save a lot of space, all right? Uh, encryption. Uh, encryption is extremely important, especially in, in the context of uh, security. Um, so encryption, what it does is that it, it, it puts the content of the drive or the folder in, in a way that uh, it cannot be read without being decrypted. So even if someone, so let's say that you have a laptop and the hard drive is not encrypted. If somebody steals the laptop, they turn it on, they may not be able to log on normally to Windows or Linux because of the password, even though there are tools in which you can actually break the, you know, those passwords. But somebody that steals a laptop would, would open the laptop, take the hard drive out, um, connect that hard, hard drive to another laptop. You could buy an external USB encryption connected, and then they can read the content of the drive. If the drive is encrypted, they will not be able to read the content of the drive. So uh, any, uh, in the concept of a corporate environment, encryption, encryption is extremely important, okay? And here you can see that, for example, FAT, any versions of FAT uh, does not support encryption, but NTFS does, right? And HEFS does, uh, EXT4 does not. So, so those are the kind of things that um, so you may get a question that says, you know, hey, this file system supports encryption. You need to know that, okay? Uh, permissions, right? Um, again, you cannot put any permissions on any file uh, on, on the FAT32 or FAT file system, but you can put, you know, permissions on NTFS and HFS and EXT4. Um, so that's, that's another big thing. Uh, journaling. Uh, generally basically mean that the file system can keep tracks of files if something happened to a file. So let's say on NTFS, there is a spreadsheet with important HR information and someone goes in and modifies the file. Well, um, generally means that it keeps track of who did it. So in a corporate environment, you have to log on with the username and password. So th there is... Um, in the security context, the concept of accountability. So generally, journaling uh, gives this, uh, uh, the, the, the feature of general allows for a security personnel, right? To find out who actually did the change. Also, it keeps track of the changes in the operating system. So if, if the file gets corrupted or something like that, then journaling. So generally basically makes the file system more reliable and um, the file system doesn't corrupt as easily as they used to in the, in the old file systems, okay? So that's important to know. Again, FAT does not support um, uh, journaling. Uh, limitation, when it comes to the uh, maximum file size. For example, uh, one of the limitations of FAT32 is that a single file cannot be greater than four gigabytes, a single file. So yes, you, you can have a FAT32 drive with like up to 32 gigabyte, but let's say that you have a big movie that you're downloading. Uh, movies are like a single file movie, right? If the movie is greater than four gigabyte, which actually in HD, almost you know any movie is greater than four gigabyte. Um, so you won't be able to do that. But in um, uh, NTFS, it's 16 exabytes. And that is a very, very uh, large number, okay? Um, HEFS, it's eight exabyte, and EXT4 supports uh, 16 terabyte. So in a previous le lesson, we talked about this units of measure, and that's why it's important to, uh, so that you understand what, what these things uh, are, all right? So, this is the maximum file size. Now, when it comes to the volume size, the volume size means the, the, the drive itself, the entire, not the physical drive, but you know, remember you can have a drive and have different volumes. The drive letter itself, right? Um, in 
in FAT32, the volume could be, so I could have, you know, up to uh, eight tera. And actually this is new because um, in the original FAT32, it was only 32 gigabyte, but um, in NTFS it's 16 exabyte. And again, and, and there's in HFS and all that stuff. Um, another thing is that um, case aware basically means that it would know that it's either lowercase or, or uppercase, right? Uh, FAT32 now, uh, in the newest win versions of Windows, Windows 10, the, the latest version, then yes, it is um, uh, case aware. And the reason why Microsoft uh, did this is because so that it can be compatible with certain stuff in this other file system. Because this other file system like HEFS and EXT have been, you know, case aware and sensitivity aware uh, for a long time. There is also limitation when it comes to the uh, the characters that you can put in the file name, okay? So, um, so reserved characters basically mean that you cannot use any of these characters in the name of the file or folder, okay? So you cannot use this in fat, you cannot use this group here in, in, in NTFS and, and so forth. In, in the other files, like for example, in ext4, the only thing that you cannot use, because this is used for the root, the volume itself, it's that one. But basically you can use anything else. So th this is great. In Windows, there is a lot of limitations in, in, in terms of what you can put for the file name. And there's also certain naming rules. Again, so it goes with this. So you cannot you know, put those. And also naming rules in terms of like how long the file can be and, and, and that kind of stuff. So we'll see some of this in action when, uh, we take a look at the demos. So um, anyway, so in Windows by default, it's not case aware, but you can you can run a um, a PowerShell command, uh, which is right here, um, to basically enable uh, the, um, uh, the 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 awareness, the case awareness, if you wanted to call it. And, and basically it's it's right here. So you just, you know, type in this and then you would type in um, this command. You actually have to reboot the, um, the command, uh, the computer once you do that. So that's basically the way that you put this into, um, uh, into uh, sensitivity aware, okay? When it comes to folders, um, so folders are like buckets, right? The directors where, where you store individual files. Folders can be used to organize those files. Um, you create distinct logical areas with the different security privileges. So let's say um, the human resources department has a folder to store sensitive information. And then those folders can, uh, you can apply permissions so that only a specific people can have access to that. Um, but there may be a folder that they, HR uses that is with general information that anyone can use, right? So there could be probably a public folder with the uh, company policies and, and, and a number of things that, you know, uh, should be available for the employees. Uh, separate OS and application files from, from user data, or actually they separate uh, OS and application. So, what that means is that there are certain folders that are only used by the OS or should only be used by the OS. And then any data that you store, you should create your own folders to store and then separate that. And the best practice is, for example, to use the C drive uh, for the operating system and the application that you install. And then you have another drive, whether it is D or E or F or whatever. And then you create a uh, folders with uh, data files information about your employees, your products, your processes, and et cetera. Uh, they also separate user data belonging to different accounts. So in Windows, when you create an account, there is a, uh, there is a folder on the C drive called users, and every uh, user has a folder, and, and basically it creates some kind of like a, an environment, a profile for that user, if you want to call it. And um, so everything that belongs to the user then is on that specific folder so that you can protect it and organize it and that kind of stuff, okay? Um, uh, partition the root folders. Again, we'll talk about 
so basically you, you have this root folder, right? You, you partition that root folder, if you want to call it, and then you put all the folders where you organize your, um, your files and folders. Subfolders and file paths. So again, we have the C drive. Um, in Windows, you have then uh, C slash Windows and then Windows System 32. All of these are system uh, generated folders and files that you should never touch. The, the, these are used by the operating system. Of course, in the C drive, you can create all the folders for yourself also, but because the C drive is used uh, mainly for the operating systems and, and program files, my recommendation is that you create a different partition than the C drive to store uh, you know, um, data files. When it comes to Windows system folders, again, we, we talked about the Windows uh, folder, uh, the system root uh, containing you know, uh, drivers, logs, add-in applications, systems and registry files. Uh, notably, there is a folder called the system32 subfolder and, and so on. Um, so the system32 contains most of the applications and utilities that are used in, in, uh, manage, in, to manage and configure Windows. You should never rename, delete, copy, move, or even touch anything that's in the system32 folder. And again, we, we'll, we'll demonstrate all of this. Uh, there is a folder called Program Files with a whole bunch of other files and subfolders uh, you know, for install applications and software. Um, there is a folder called program files and there is one called program files x86. Normally the uh, program files is used for the 64-bit applications and the program files x86 folder it's used for 32-bit application which we have already talked a lot about the difference between the 32-bit uh, and 64-bit applications and uh, also there is uh, folders uh, to start to store or for storage of users profile settings and, and data. So what default installation folders contain systems and application files that should not normally be deleted or modified manually or in other words they are modified by the operating system or applications but you shouldn't do that manually. Right? And again, the answer is Windows and the program files folders. Okay, whether it is the program files or the program file x86 folder. So e either of those, again, um, you should be very careful what you do with those. So what is the file path to the documents folder for a user named David? Assuming the Windows installed to a hard disk with a single partition using the default settings, and then the answer is you know, C, users, David, and then uh, documents. And again, so the, the, the C users contain all the users. So David, um, Raymond, Philip, whatever you know, the name might be. Uh, Linux basically, instead of folders, referred to as directories, but in, in, in comps it is the same thing. So folder is basically more like Windows a specific terminology, and again, um, Linux uses the uh, uses the, the term directories. Uh, the root folder and the delimiter is a for a slash. So that's basically uh, denotes what is the uh, root folder in Linux. Um, there are no drives in, in Linux, you know, so different storage devices are mounted within the root file system. Uh, so basically you, you have a drive, you mount it, and then that's what becomes, but there's no it's so it's a little bit different than windows it's just a a different uh, file system uh, operating system in the way that it handles these things so file explorers in windows again windows explorer just explorer is the program that manage all the files and folders and stuff like that in windows uh here's the so you have what's called the navigation pane which is on on the left and then when you click on one of those items there it will be displayed on the right. Uh, there's some quick access in, in, in desktop as, a, as seen on this image. Um, so you have like the OneDrive, for example, to store uh, stuff in the cloud. If you have a Microsoft account, you need to log in with the Microsoft account. Um, there is also the free version and, and the paid version if you have an Office 365 account. So you have user account. This PC, which in old versions, it used to be called a computer 
or even my computer in the very old version. Now it's called this PC. And then you have libraries, network, uh, control panel, recycle bin, and and um, and all that stuff. So that's all part of that can be managed through File Explorer, and we'll see that um, later on. So user profiles and libraries. Um, so we got the profile subfolders. Every user has, you know, this profile, and then it has like the documents, the pictures, the uh, music, and all that stuff. There is also what is called the public profile. The, the public profile is, let's say that, you know, five people share a Windows 10 computer. Everyone has a, uh, a user account, and the folders in each user account, it's kind of like private to that user. So if you want to share, let's say, pictures and, and music that are going to be shared by the five, the five people in that computer, then you use what is called the public profile. And in the public profile, you're going to find music and pictures and all that. So if you have music that you want to share with everyone in that computer, you should put it in that public profile. And again, um, so libraries are like virtual folders. So they're not exactly the same because libraries contains multiple folders, but those folders could be in other physical drives, right? Um, well, uh, so again, in that sense, you know, they are actually different. So how is a Windows library different from a folder? Again, a library acts as a virtual folder by displaying the contents of multiple folders, which could be located on different drives. Creating a folder, name must be unique at the same level. So what does that mean? Uh, if you have a folder called, let's say, um, uh, public data, right? Inside that public data folder, if you create any folder, all the folders that you create there can be they have to be unique, right? So if you have a, a folder called January, you, you cannot have another folder called January there. You could have another folder called January on another subfolder, but in that level, it has to be obviously unique. Uh, this allowed characters. So again, you cannot use those characters in the file name. The full path cannot usually exceed 266 characters. Um, they are case aware, but not case sensitive in Windows. What does that mean? Uh, so basically, folder and file names are case aware. Basically means that the system uh, preserve case in the name uh, as enter, but does not regard the case as significant for operations such as deleting. So it's still, you know, uh, a file with the different case uh, names is still the same file, right? But the, the operating system is aware of that. And this is new in Windows. In Linux, this has been the case since the beginning, but in Windows, this is new. And the reason it's like that is because um, of backward compatibility with those uh, OSs. Uh, containers for data written to disk. Again, so uh, binary files, right? The, the, the operating system, the computers, that's what they read, but we humans understand text files, right? So you have a combination of binary files and text files, right? File types and extensions, uh, similar naming rules to the folders with those some restrictions, right? Last part of the file name. Um, so you have a file called, you know, letter dot uh, doc, right? For a Word document. Um, the basically the last part of that, the, the dot part of it there basically denotes what kind of file it is in, in, in with what program it can be opened. Um, so the extension basically shows the file type. Uh, applications can be associated with different actions, uh, basically meaning that if you have a music file, th there are very different programs that can be used to play music, right? Well, you need to associate that file with a default program. Uh, yes, you, you can right click and say, I want to open with this program, but it has to be associated with a, a specific program. All right. Um, creating and opening files. So this is a very common task, right? Uh, to you either save or save as command. Um, so when you create a file for the first time, you need to save the file. And then later on, if you want to, let's say, have another copy of that file or that file in another format, then you use the save as. So the save as allows you to create like another copy of, of that file. Um, you can right click on a folder and say new, 
and then you can uh, create a new folder or also a new file, right? Uh, the file normally it doesn't have a name. You need to put a name. The same thing happened when you open, or you can say open with and open with a different. All of this when you right click a file and fold. And again, we'll we'll see that in the demos in in in, in the lab later on. So if you have made changes to a file and want to keep both the original file and the modified version, what command should you use? And again, uh, the answer is the uh, save as. Uh, file Explorer options, general, uh, Explorer behavior. So if you look at that, you know, um, just basically how it behaves. If you go to the view, and basically we're talking about this thing. When you go into folder options and control panel, the general tab, the view, uh, allows you to, by default, a lot of files are hidden, especially with system files, but sometimes it, you want to rebuild these things and you need to unhide those files. The reason why they are hidden is because normal users do not need to see those files. Actually, it, it is dangerous because if they delete those files, then the system may not function properly. Um, when it comes to renaming, copying, and moving files and folders, um, rename any file. Do not change the extension unless you mean to do so. So basically when you rename a file, you rename the first part of it, not the extension, unless you want to do so, but it has other implications. Uh, you can do copy and move, and the name goes with it. If copy creates another copy, move basically, move the file from one location to another, whether it is on the same volume or different volumes. And, um, um, and again, so when, when you do this, you get this window here in, in, uh, in Windows. And um, so basically, uh, um, if you are copying the moving files, you can, if there is a file with the same name, you can either replace it, you can skip the file, you can compare to see if they are the same. Because just because two files have the same name, that doesn't mean that they have the same content. Uh, you may have modified the content of one, but the content of the other, it's not. So you may be working with the wrong file. So uh, again, we'll take a look at that later on. Deleting files in the recycled bin. It's important to know that when you delete a file or a folder, it goes to what is called the recycle bin, but the file is not completely removed. Still, it is still in the computer. But you can go into the recycle bin and you can recover files if that's what you want to do. Now, if you want to make sure that you really delete a file, you empty the recycle bin or you use the shift plus delete key to erase the file. Now, keep in mind that, that there are programs that allows you to recover those files even after you have emptied the recycle bin. So in terms of uh, computer forensics, there are a lot of tools that, that we use that can actually recover files. It doesn't matter that you have deleted them. So um, when you do a stuff, just be aware that if there is an investigation, that data, the only way that you can actually delete stuff is taking a hammer and, and just destroying the hard drive. There are other ways, but what I'm saying is just deleting stuff doesn't mean that they are actually deleted. But in terms of Windows, yes. Uh, in terms of Windows, they are. You would need uh, third party tools in order to recover most of those things. Uh, no recycle, um, recycling uh, for flash drives or network shares. We'll talk more about network shares in the network piece. Um, now, so what that means is that if you have a flash drive and you delete something, it's gone. It won't go to the, and, and those are more challenging to recover. Even with, uh, with uh, computer forensic tools, um, those are challenging. Same thing happened with the network share stuff. Why should you be more careful about deleting files from a USB flash drive than from the main hard drive? Well, we just said it because the files will not be recycled. Selecting multiple files and folders. Uh, you can click and drag or, or I mean shift click, click. You can use control click. You can use the shift plus arrow and select. And again, so if you're working with multiple files, this thing you know comes in handy. If you want to select everything in a folder, the computer, you can use also control A. And you gotta be careful when you do that because if you uh, select a whole bunch of files and then you press the delete key, you are deleting everything uh, in that folder or subfolder. File attributes. If you right click on a file, uh, some of the attributes are read only. You can make the file read only so that people do not modify it. You can hit in a file. 
you can hide a file. In other words, the, the hidden attribute. Um, it, it could also, if it's a system file, it will have the a system attribute and archive means that it has been archived if you are using backup programs. We'll, we'll take a look at that in, during the demos. File property dialog. So this is what I'm talking about. You right click on a folder and these are some of the properties, right? The location, the size, the size of the disk, the uh, contents of the file, like this is a folder and this is how many files are there in that folder when it was created and then you have the hidden, and then there's some more stuff in the advanced uh, uh, part of it. Folder and file permissions. Um, again, you can you can uh, assign permission to files and folders, and these are some of the permissions you can do: a full control, modify, read, write. You can do deny. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. And again, the file system must support that. In this case, this is MTFS. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, as I said, the, the HR uh, example, HR may have a folder and then they give permission to a specific people within their group or whoever, right? And, and once they give permission, then they decide what level of permission. We'll take a look at this when we are doing the uh, labs in uh, MTFS. When it comes to searching for files and folders, many times you're looking for something, you don't remember where you saved it or you work on a computer that somebody uh, else uses. So uh, it's important to know how to search for things. Uh, Microsoft has what is called the instant search, which is this box over here. Uh, and you just search for it. You can search for anything, files, folders, programs, you name it, right? That's instant search. You can uh, match files and programs, apps, so you can do for everything. You can just press the start button and then it'll. you can start searching. And you could also use this little guy um, called uh, Cortana, which is kind of like a virtual assistant, just like Alexa for Amazon, where basically you can you can talk. If you have a microphone in a laptop, right, you can you can talk and say, hey, uh, look for a file containing the word letter, for example, and, and it would search that just with your voice. File explorers a search again. Um, so you can use look for the file name or the file content or the file size. So when you do search, there's a whole bunch of criteria by, by which you can uh, search for things. Um, when you're looking for files and folders, especially in, in a uh, folder where there's a lot of files, you can sort, uh, look at the different views. And again, here, all the, you know, so you are into what is called view. And then you can search, you know, by the content details, list, titles, that kind of stuff. So uh, depending on what is it that you're doing. And then you can go and say sort by, and then you can sort by a number of things, type, size, folder, descending, ascending, you know, that kind of stuff. So many features to find because there are, you know, literally hundreds, even the thousands of puzzle folders in a computer. And, and sometimes uh, you just don't remember where you put stuff. It would be nice if you remember every time, but um, again, you can. And plus, if you work in a corporate environment, um, you work with you know an environment in which there are files and folders for a lot of other users, not just necessarily you. Um, so again, you know, um, these are all of the criteria that we can use there. What view option could you use to show uh, files of a particular type sorted by date? Well, you can group files by the file type and then sort by day. So let's say you're looking for um, Microsoft Word documents. So you look up by the, uh, you know, dot DOCX type, and then you can sort by day. And then you say, oh, this is a Word document that I worked on, let's say, um, you know, last week, then it's easy to find it that way. Now, when it comes to the file types and extension, um, different programs use different file types. So TXT is a text, uh, text only. Um, mostly for, uh, you know, notepad, and, but there are a lot of programs that can like Word and, and um, uh, Word, there is Microsoft Word and there is WordPad and Notepad, right? Um, there is the RTF format, there is ODF and the Microsoft Office Word uses the old versions, DOC, but these are backward compatible. So in other words, I, if I have an old document, I can convert it into DOC and vice versa. Uh, this format is the one used. This is so one of the most popular in an enterprise level that you're probably going to be working with. 
uh, uh, expression. If you see a file that ends in uh, XLS or XLSX, that's Microsoft Excel. Presentation uh, for Microsoft uses either PPT or PPTX. And then uh, uh, the PDF is very popular for um, documentations and stuff like that. Tons of stuff you download from the internet, they're gonna be in PDF. And then you need a PDF reader, right? Which is Acrobat Reader, for example, is free that you can uh, download. Image file formats, the most uh, common types are the JPG or JPEG. Um, you also have the, you know, JIP, uh, TIFF, uh, PNG, and BMP, sorry, are uh, the Windows native, like the Windows Paint file, and, you know, they tend to be really big and stuff like that, so uh, you don't probably use that that much, but um, they're used in Windows. So again, these are the different uh, file formats to um, just understand that if you see any file with any of this uh, extension, that means it's, a, it's an image, it's a picture of some, some sort. What kind of data would you expect to find in a file with a TIFF extension? And again, it's an image uh, file format. Video file formats, the most common are the um, MPG, you have the MP4, these are very popular because um, these are used by uh, Apple and, and, and you know, almost uh, anything out there supports MP4. Um, FLV, it's another um, file for, uh, to deliver flash video. Um, WMV, this is for Windows Media Video and then AVI, it's a legacy Windows only video format. So all of this, if you see a file, with any of this extension, it means that it's a video file and therefore you need a video program uh, to play it. Uh, audio files, the most common, MP3. Um, so you have AAC, which is Advanced Audio Coding, um, MA48 and FLAC and WAVE and all that stuff. The, the factor when you look at, you know, when you listen to music nowadays, you know, MP3 is the uh, most popular. All right, executable files, EXE. Uh, MSI, all of these are executable, basically means they run a program when you double click on it. These are the type of files that you gotta be very careful, especially when you get an attachment in an email, because they could be a virus, they could be something that would harm your computer. Any file that ends in any of this, and, and there are hundreds more, are extremely dangerous and they could harm your computer. All right, uh, compression file formats, um, uh, zip, this is uh, very popular. Uh, it was, you know, basically um, when you download something from the internet, it comes compressed in, in, in this kind of format. Uh, Linux uses TAR, there's also RAR, 7Z, there's a whole bunch of stuff. ISO are also very popular. Like when you download, for example, an operating system from Microsoft, uh, it uses an ISO format. Right? VHD are used by uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, and all the programs, and then VMDK, uh, basically used by VMware. And then VMG is also a disk image file format used by Apple Mac OS. All right, so what is a zip file? Uh, a file archive containing all the files in a compressed format. And then finally, um, so this is uh, the end of this chapter. Um, this is the end of uh, this module. Um, I will um, get back to you in another video at some other point. Bye-bye.